All right, UFC 298 happened this past weekend. We saw Alexander Volkanovsky, arguably one of the greatest featherweights of all time, maybe even the greatest. He got knocked out cold by Ilya Taporia, undefeated, now 15-0, and and the new UFC featherweight champion. Now, this fight was very 50-50. Some people predicted Volkanovsky, some people predicted Taporia. It was a tough fight to judge because it is a very dangerous matchup for Volkanovsky because of Taporia's finishing ability. In my prediction video, I had predicted Taporia by decision. Now, I'm going to get into more of that, but... But listen, guys, I mean, the pay-per-view overall, I thought it was better than 297. I thought, though, it was still a little bit disappointing in some aspects. I want to talk about the pay-per-view at the end of the video, but this is mostly going to be about Ilya Taporia. What does this mean? You know, what is next for him? I mean, there's talks of Spain. Is his next opponent Volkanovski? We're going to get into all that and more. But first, I remind you guys to subscribe button, like, comment, and share. We're almost at 12,000 subs, guys. We are 500 subs away. So if you guys could just hit the subscribe button, I very much appreciate it. Also, guys, make sure to check the description. I just launched a Discord server. I've been able to talk to you guys throughout the pay-per-view. It was a really fun experience. So, guys, make sure to join that and, you know, just have a conversation with us. But UFC 298, all right, guys? Anaheim, California, you know, we were expecting this fight to be either devastating for Volk fans or an extreme humbling for Taporia. And what we saw was a bit of a mix of both, right? I mean, Taporia had moments. Volkanovski had moments. Obviously, Taporia won the fight. Guys, I got to be honest about something, all right? They're walking out. You know, Volkanovski, I hear the walkout music. I hear, you know, Down Under, whatever that song is named, to be honest. I don't know the name. And I'm thinking, you know, hearing them walk out, I'm like, you know what? I'm switching my prediction, bro. I'm going on Volk by decision. I think he's going to actually just 50-45 them. I didn't think 50-45, but I thought that he would win the decision. I thought a lot of people would be impressed by him. And I was getting that vibe. I don't know. Maybe it was just the walkout music. Maybe it was the cheers. I don't know. Maybe it was just, you know, how he locked out. I changed my opinion. I told you guys that it was possible, and I changed my prediction. So I was wrong for this one. As much as I want to take credit and say I picked Taporia, I did switch my prediction. We get to the first round, right? And Volkanovski wins the first round. I mean, Volkanovski was looking very good, you know, using his kicks, which is what I said he had to do, right? I said, look, you're not going to win a boxing fight against Taporia. He is a very high level boxer. I mean, maybe you can, but it's just not worth the risk. Taporia has devastating knockout power. So you want to, you know, really keep the distance, make it harder for him to land punches and use your kicks, which is what he was doing. You know, we saw him kicking the inside of the lead leg. So I'm kicking the body, you know, landing head kicks, trying to catch him and using his jab, using really good footwork. And I thought Volkanovski looked very good in the first round, but Taporia did have some good moments too. And he was getting touched up by the jab. I think the speed of Volkanovski surprised Taporia. And we get to the second round. And this looks like to be another Volkanovski round, right? Volkanovski, you know, he's doing very good. Taporia had some moments, but at the end of the round, you know, I'm thinking, man, Volkanovski is doing really good. I'm already thinking, who is he going to fight next, to be honest? Like, I was like, yo, maybe they could do him and Yaya Rodriguez again. I mean, that would be pretty dumb. I was thinking, yo, who are they going to face Volk against? Is literally what I was thinking in my head. Then all of a sudden, we see, boom, knock out from Taporia. A big right hook lands on the chin of Alexander Volkanovski, putting him out cold, worse than the Islam knockout. And I want to talk about later in the video about Volkanovski because I am worried for the guy, and I'll talk about that later. But we see Taporia become the new UFC featherweight champion only the fifth i mean it's surprising there's only been five featherweight champions first let me talk about volkanovsky all right what's up with volkanovsky look volkanovsky now has suffered two knockout losses in the span of four months i am worried for the guy this is not good i mean he got basically knocked out cold in the islam fight i mean he wasn't out cold but close to it and this fight he was out for quite a decent amount of time i mean that is two massive concussions back to back within four months i mean keep in mind i mean both fights he did not go to the hospital for he was at the post fight presser he suffered two concussions that is a massive massive deal guys we've seen people get knocked out and never be the same let alone get knocked out twice in the span of four months like that and i think if i'm volkanovsky i'm saying look i gotta put my ego aside and it looks like he's saying that it looks like he's saying he wants some time off he needs time off i do not want to see volkanovsky fighting till the end of the year and that might work out for the ufc's plans because of taporia's plans because of sean o'malley's plans we're gonna get into that in a little bit but i don't think that volkanovsky should return at least till next year in my opinion i think you should wait a full year we've seen guys like calvin cater right i mean he got battered by holloway waited a year came came back and looked so good against Giga Chikadze. A lot of people underestimate the time off. You know, people really say, oh, it's important to work hard, 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 but you also have to know when it's time to take some time off. And that's what really makes a world champion. And I think Volkanovski, you know, he didn't realize that against the Makachev fight, right? He didn't realize it going into this fight. He needed the time off. And I do think, to be honest, that right hook would have finished Volkanovski. Maybe it wouldn't have been as vicious as that. Maybe it would have gotten a knockdown and some ground and pound. But I do think that right hook would have finished him because that was a nasty right hook from Taporia. And I just worry for him because honestly, even with a year off, he's going to be 36. I think Volkanovski, that's the best thing for him. I don't think he should come back in the summer at all. I think I don't want to see him back at least till December, end of the year, or something like that. Because other than that, man, I don't think it's going to be good for him. And that's my take on Alexander Volkanovski. Well, let's talk about the winner, Ilya Taporia, right? He has a few options ahead of him for his next title defense. Obviously, this was a close fight. Volkanovski was winning, I think, the first two rounds. And we just saw Taporia put his lights out. And that's the difficult part with Taporia is no matter how good you are, I mean, he's got great jujitsu that he can finish you with. He's got great striking he can finish you with. The knockout power is so 
so devastating, you just don't know. You have to be on lookout all the time for this guy. In my opinion, I think there's three clear options, right? Let's talk about the obvious first, right? Let's talk about Alexander Volkanovsky rematch, right? That could very well be next. It looks like that they're going to go to Spain next. Something that I feel like didn't get a lot of traction was Errol Hawani reporting that, look, Ilya Tapori, apparently his deal was up at the end of 2023, and that's why you saw Hunter Campbell go to Spain. And I think part of the deal of that thing was like, hey, we're planning to go to Spain. We're going to go to Spain for you. Just please sign with us. We'll offer you some more money, like kind of like a compromise. And that could have helped Tapori decide if he was signing with the UFC or not. So we could very well see maybe a fight night main event Volkanovski versus Tapori in Spain. It could also be a pay-per-view. You never know. But honestly, knowing the UFC, I would not be surprised if we don't see him go to Spain because apparently they just don't like to go places. At least next week's fight night isn't at the apex. But it could very well be Volkanovski. And just because I want Volkanovski to take some time off doesn't mean Volk wants that. Doesn't mean the UFC wants that. And doesn't mean Tapori wants it. Tapori might want to be active. But I don't think they should go necessarily with an immediate rematch. I think, look, I think Volkanovski should take a year off and then whoever has the title, he should get a title shot for because he is one of the greatest featherweights of all time. In my opinion, I think the greatest featherweight of all time, but Jose Aldo does, of course, have a great argument for that status as well. So what I think they should do perhaps and what I don't think is going to happen, and I'm going to explain why in a second, is perhaps maybe a champ-champ fight against Sean O'Malley and Ilya Taboria, assuming Sean O'Malley beats Marlon Vera. And even if Marlon Vera wins, I mean, it would still be cool, you know, Ecuador versus Spain. Don't know if they would really do that though with Marlon Vera, but I don't know. Look, this fight is massive. I think most people would be excited. This is the younger generation of MMA. I mean, both guys in their late 20s, both guys not even in the prime of their career. They're still before their athletic prime. And it's also just a very fun matchup. I mean, both guys are very good strikers. I mean, I think Tapori would probably go to the grappling a little bit more and try to mix it up. And it's a great matchup. And I think a lot of people are going to be annoyed and say, look, Sean O'Malley shouldn't get the champ champ fight. At the end of the day, he's going to get superstar privilege. This isn't my preferred option. I'm going to get into my preferred option last. But the reason I don't think that this fight is going to happen is this. Ilya Taporia has proven that he has now gotten a lot of numbers behind him. He's got a lot of hype. He's a very charismatic figure. I think this guy has the potential to be a superstar. And I think the UFC looks at this like, look, if it's Taporia and Sean O'Malley, at the end of the day, one of these guys are going to get knocked off as a star. And while it is a massive fight, and you can maybe make an argument and say, hey, you know, the UFC sees that Marab's probably going to beat O'Malley. Not saying that's my prediction, but I'm just saying that maybe they think that. Maybe they're like, okay, let's just squeeze as much as we can from him and let him do this champ champ fight. That is possible, and we could see that happen. I think it's also going to depend on how the pay-per-view does for UFC 299, but I don't think they're going to want to knock off one of their superstars. I think they'd rather have two superstars to headline some pay-per-views, and maybe in the future, maybe in a year if they're still champion, maybe in two years if they're still champions, they're going to fight down the line. Because if one of those guys loses, none of their stock is really going to fall if they're already big superstars. We saw with Volkanovski, I mean, when he lost to Islam, did his stock really drop at all? Even with the knockout, I mean, it didn't really, I feel like, drop so much. I feel like people were still respecting Volkanovski. And I think my last option, a lot of people aren't going to expect, this is my number one fight I want to see for Ilya Taporia. I want to see him fight Max Hall. Holloway. Look, Max Holloway obviously has a matchup with Justin Gaethje, and if he loses to Justin Gaethje, should he get a title shot? I think it becomes a little bit more difficult. However, if he beats Justin Gaethje, I also could see a scenario where he stays at lightweight, maybe fights Islam, because yeah, I think Holloway versus Islam is a gigantic fight. But we could also see maybe he beats Gaethje or loses to Gaethje, comes back down and gets an immediate title shot. And I would really love to see him in Taporia. I think Max Holloway could potentially beat Taporia. I think that's a good matchup against Taporia. A longer guy, you know, a guy that's going to throw a lot of volume, push back somebody, someone who has good cardio, who could stay there through the later rounds, and most importantly, he has an iron chin. If Taporia can't knock out Holloway, I mean, I don't really see how Taporia could beat him. I think we're going to see Max Holloway really outvolume him. That's the fight that I most want to see because I think that is super, super interesting because I could also see Taporia winning. Don't get me wrong, I think that's really close. Another fight they could do is, I guess, next week's winner against Ortega and Yair Rodriguez. Whoever wins that fight very well could fight for the title next. I mean, Ortega is coming off of a loss to Yair Rodriguez, which was obviously very controversial with the whole shoulder stuff. And Yair, I don't believe, has fought since his loss to Volkanovski right? So I think that either way, he's coming off of a loss. He wins against Brian Ortega. I don't really see a problem with that. I mean, he fought for an interim title with a win over Brian Ortega, which was obviously controversial. So I honestly, I could see maybe they do have the spear, you know, they have the big Mexico City card, Ilya Taporia versus Yaya Rodriguez. I've been saying that, but who knows with this whole Spain thing. And just to touch on some of my thoughts about the pay-per-view, I thought the Robert Whitaker and Paul Costa fight was absolutely amazing. Ian Gary is still super annoying, and it was a very, very boring fight. I feel bad for Henry Cejudo. I'm actually one of the rare Henry Cejudo fans. I do like him. I think he's a smart guy. Yes, he could do some cringe stuff, but I'm definitely going to miss him. I feel bad. I wish they would have just gave him his moment, but I'm super happy for Marab. As I said, I'm a big Marab supporter. I think Marab's a great guy. And yeah, pay-per-view was all right. I just, you know, a lot of the fights, eh, you know, I wanted some more shocking moments, a little more knockdowns, a little more knockouts, a lot more finishes, but it is what it is, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Make sure to check out my video talking about how the UFC is potentially holding Conor McGregor and not letting the guy fight. And also check out the video of me reacting to Alexander Volkanovsky's interview, talking about how this is a bigger problem in fighting, talking about the big problem with fighters and the brutal truth of fighting go check that video out thank you guys for watching you guys are the best fan base 
and MMA, and I'll see you guys in the next one.